Hello, I'm Emma Matthews. I'm an academic neurologist at the Institute of Neurology and the Queen Square Centre for Neuromuscular Diseases. These are my colleagues, Professor Michael Hanna and Dr. Rupi Manaku. We run a national referral service funded by NHS England for the diagnosis and treatment of skeletal muscle channelopathies. And we would like to share some of our recent work. To date, the majority of cases of hypokalemic periodic paralysis have been associated with mutations in two genes, CACNA1S and SCN4A, but at least 10% remain genetically undetermined. The disease is characterized by episodes of skeletal muscle weakness in association with low serum potassium levels. So when the potassium levels are normal, patients appear outwardly healthy and can take part in all usual daily activities. But when the serum potassium levels become low, they experience episodes of disabling muscle weakness. The CACNA1S and SCM4A genes both code for sarcolemmal ion channels that have important roles in muscle membrane excitability and contractility. They both consist of four transmembrane domains that fold together to form the channel. Usually ions only move into the cell across the muscle membrane via the main pore of the channel when the main pore is open. In hypokalemic periodic paralysis, however, the mutations create a gating pore that allows cations to leak into the cell even when the main pore is closed. As cations leak into the cell, they create an increase in positive charge, which could lead towards membrane depolarization. This is usually counteracted by other channels in the muscle membrane that expel cations. These channels are inhibited, however, in low potassium, which can increase the likelihood of membrane depolarization and muscle weakness occurring. We were referred a young boy with mild learning difficulties, developmental delay and epilepsy. From the age of two, he began to experience episodes of bilateral skeletal muscle weakness that were not associated with headache or any other clinical symptoms. His serum potassium levels were low during the episodes of weakness, and his symptoms improved following treatment with potassium supplements. This was consistent with the diagnosis of hypokalemic periodic paralysis, but epilepsy does not usually occur in this condition. We did not identify any mutations in the genes that we know are associated with periodic paralysis, but we did identify a novel heterozygous missense mutation in the ATP1A2 gene. The amino acid altered by this mutation is very highly conserved and has a key role in the function of the alpha-2 isoform of the sodium potassium ATPase pump. The pump is expressed in both skeletal muscle and brain astrocytes. And pump activity is crucial for sodium and potassium homeostasis following sustained muscle or neuronal activity. This made it a very good candidate to explain both the episodes of muscle weakness and the symptoms of epilepsy. Our lab focuses mainly on ion channels. So we established a collaboration with the pump expert, Hannah Paulsen, Aarhus University. She helped us with expression clones, setting up protocols and interpreting the data. Pumps were expressing cerebrosocytes and the properties studied using two electrode voltage clamp, mainly by Marisol San Pedro Castanier. We first studied the pump function in the absence of extracellular potassium. The pump does not go through the whole transport cycle, so you can study the binding and unbinding of extracellular sodium to pump. In response to standard voltage steps, the volatile pump currents look like this. This data is used to measure the voltage dependence and rate constants of binding and unbinding reactions. The currents of the S779 and mutant pump are dramatically altered compared to the volatile pump. In particular, while the current for volatile pumps quickly relaxes to zero, the mutant pump clearly conducts leak current at steady state. The inward leak current at resting membrane potential reminds of gating pump currents associated with hypo-PP. We think that it is this leak current that leads to depolarization of the muscle and periodic paralysis in our patient. We also found that the voltage dependence and the rates of sodium binding are dramatically altered in the mutant pump. However, 
Similar defects have been observed in ATP1 A2 mutations that cause hemiplegic migraine without the muscle phenotype. So we think that is the lead current that underlies periodic paralysis in the patient. Function of full pump cycle measured in presence of various po extracellular potassium concentrations was also altered. At potassium concentration that saturates the valve type pump function, the forward pumping rate was significantly lower for the mutant pump. This is related to an increase in the apparent EC50 for potassium at all voltages measured. Importantly, in low accessory potassium, the net current of the mutant pump is inward at resting the brain potential. This supports the role of the inward lead causing periodic paralysis at hypokalemic conditions and potentially explains the benefit, beneficial effect of potassium supplements for the patient. In summary, we present a patient with hypokalemic periodic paralysis and epilepsy without mutations in known hyper-PP genes. Instead, we found a de novo variant in ATP1A2 that encodes the alpha-2 subunit of the sodium-potassium pump expressed in brain astrocytes and in muscle. Our functional characterization supports a role of this variant in hypokalemic periodic paralysis and epilepsy. Thus, we conclude ATP1A2 is a new hypopp gene and depolarizing leak currents are a unifying pathomechanism of hypopp for both ion channels and pumps. For more details, please see our paper in brain.